Lord, break down the walls. You know, break down the walls of our heart. Um, I'm tired of holding up walls. Um, I, uh, Dakota, Dakota was saying, hey, man, you should come preach Wednesday night. And I was like, man, I would love to. And um, so he told me, I told him about a month ago, I was like, hey, man, I feel like the Lord's giving me a word and, and I would love to come share it. And um, so I've been meditating on this for like a month. And uh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited to come preach it. Um, I, I just put it all together about a week ago and I did a trial run at the Freedom House and it, it went pretty good. So hopefully it'll Hopefully it'll bless y'all, and um, yeah, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. When I was, uh, when I was, um, like, meditating on this, uh, the Lord kind of brought back to my remembrance, uh, before Christ, I always wanted to be a motivational speaker for some reason, which, it was, it was kind of comical, because I have a deathly fear of, like, getting in front of people and speaking in front of people, and, um, and, um, yeah, now it's like, what better motivational speaking can I do than speak the Word of God? Um, to speak life, to speak power, to speak motivation in Christ. And so I hope I can motivate y'all in Christ today. And um, what I, what I want to teach about is uh, our journey to rest. Um, you know, what we go through to, to enter God's rest. And so I want to base like my whole um, sermon on these four or five scriptures, and then I'm going to talk about one, go to the Old Testament, talk about another, and, and just skip around. So uh, if, if you have a Bible, try to keep up. Hopefully, um, hopefully I don't go too fast. Uh, it's out of Hebrews 4, uh, starting at 11 through 16. It says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray real quick. Uh, Lord, thank you, God, uh, for these people. God, thank you for what you have done in their life and what you are doing in their life. And God, I pray uh, that if any of them are struggling with rest, uh, God, that this can be an encouragement and a help to them. And uh, Lord, I pray um, that we break down the walls. And Lord, I pray that we share uh, just the love of Christ, uh, that you can be changed, uh, that you can be different. Um, just look up to Jesus. So Lord, bless this time and, and bless these people in Jesus' name. All right, uh, Hebrews 4, 11 through 16. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joint and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him who must give an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace and the help in time of need. Find grace to help in time of need. Um, so I want to look at the Israelites' journey to rest. Uh, so I want to start in Exodus uh, 2, uh, where they're in Egypt, um, and they're in slavery, and they're in bondage, um, and they're, they're tired of it. Um, so Exodus 2... Uh, starting at 23. During those many days, the, kingdom of, the, kingdom, the king of Egypt and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God, and God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel, and God knew. Um, how many of us have truly cried out um, how many of us are tired of Egypt, tired of bondage, tired of slavery? Uh, because God, God made a covenant with Abraham, and he said, I will be your God, and you will be my people. And God knew um, that he was going to extend out his hand and send his son to be the savior of the world. 
Um, so how many of us are, are tired of Egypt, uh, tired of being left empty, tired of being addicted, tired of being depressed, tired of being lost? Um, so we need to strive. Uh, we need to strive to enter God's rest. Um, yeah, so they're tired of being in Egypt. They cry out to the Lord, um, and God comes, and he uses a man by the name of Moses, um, and he says, go to Egypt, and he says, Lord, what should I call you when I go? And Moses is scared, and he's frightened, and he says, tell him I am who I am. And so Moses goes, and he, he uh, has these ten plagues um, that just is trumps, that just um, overpowers the Egyptian gods. Um, and same with us. You know, we have these idols in our lives. Um, we, we have these gods in our life, and, and uh, we cry out to the Lord, and he brings his love and his, his power and his grace that just trumps anything ever that we could imagine that satisfied us in the world, that we thought satisfied us in the world, until we met God and we are truly satisfied. And so God supernaturally, he changes us. He fills us with love. He, he takes that heart of stone and he gives us a heart of flesh. And for the first time in our lives, we, we feel free. What is this? You know what I'm saying? This is, this is what I want. This is what I need. Um, and it's all, it's all thanks to God. And, and so he, gets, he uh, does all these plagues. And um, on the last plague, he says, put blood over the um, doorpost of your house and um, you know, do you have that blood over you? Are you covered by the blood? Uh, because hell is real. Um, and if we don't believe, if we don't repent and believe and, and turn from our ways and believe in the gospel, we could, we could go to hell. Um, or we will if we don't do that. And so they, the Israelites, they are supernaturally changed. Um, God takes them out of slavery in Egypt and um, he brings them into the wilderness. Um, and everybody, everybody's going to go through a wilderness experience. Um, don't, don't try to stop it. Don't try to run from it. Uh, but everybody's going to go through this wilderness experience. Uh, Jesus went through one. Uh, Paul, after he got saved, he left and went away for three years. Moses, um, he lived with Egypt for 40 years and and then he killed somebody, and he left and was in a, a wilderness. And um, the wilderness experience humbles us. You know, it, it's a humbling experience. And, and I kind of want to show you what, what the Israelites went to and went through and why they went through it and, and how they come in to enter his rest. And, um, yeah, so they, they get into this wilderness, and, uh, you know, the wilderness is dry. It's hot. Um, you're lost. Uh, maybe scared, um, you know, as a, as a new believer, you, you're new in the spiritual walk, in the spiritual thinking, and you're like, man, what do I do, you know, and it can be frightening, um, you know, you're, you, get, you get this uh, sense of joy and peace and freedom, and, and then you're kind of like, okay, what do I do now? This is why discipleship is, is really good, and this is why we we thrive ourselves at Freedom House about discipleship, you know, walking along somebody. Uh, but they, they get into the, the wilderness, and, and they're lost, and they start to grumble and complain. And um, how many of us have grumbled and complained? Um, and you're, you're hungry, and you're thirsty, and, um, you know, they're, they're lost, and they don't know where to go. And they start asking for bread. You know, Lord, we're hungry, and they start complaining to Moses, and Moses cries out, and, and Jesus, or God says, I will, I will rain bread from heaven. I will rain manna from heaven. And so they, he, he rains this manna from heaven, and they start to eat, and, and he says, only, only take enough for one day. Um, you know, and it's so symbolic to get in your Bible daily. You need the bread of life daily. You can't just gather a bunch for the week and, and come to church and get filled. No, you got to seek Christ daily. And you got to be in your word and you got to ask God to give you revelation. And um, so I want to I kind of give an example of the, 
the New Testament, um, and it's going to be in John 6. John 6, starting at 26. All right. Jesus answered them. This is after Jesus feeds the 5,000. And Jesus answered them, answers them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not, for the food, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is what the work of God, this is the work of God that you believe in him who has sent, who he has sent. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to stop there. But uh, um, just how much when we're new Christians, how we seek the physical. You know, we, we become these new believers and, and we're seeking the physical. Um, and we don't know, um, we're not too sure about the spiritual and we, we don't know what it is and we still are carnally minded. And you'll see it in this next one when, it, when he talks about the living water. Um, they're in the wilderness, and um, the Israelites, they're thirsty, you know, makes sense. And um, they once again start complaining, and Moses uh, cries out to the Lord, and um, he says, go to this rock and strike this rock. Um, and it's a picture of Christ, um, that the rock, Jesus, is going to be struck, and, and out will flow rivers of living water. Uh, which is prophetic in Joel, that he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. You know, my, my old men will uh, see visions, and my young men will dream dreams, and, and my daughters will prophesy. And, um, and so I also want to show you in the New Testament, um, it's in John seven thirty seven through 9, and uh, Jesus says, He says, uh, all who are thirsty, come to me and I will give you drink. And out will flow rivers of living water, um, which he spoke of the Spirit, but they could not yet receive because he was not yet crucified. And so just how we go through our Christian walk, and and we don't think spiritually. You know what I'm saying? We go and and we want bread that perishes, and we want water that will make you thirsty again. But Jesus says, come to me. He says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke and learn from me and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is so light. So the first thing the Israelites did wrong was they're seeking physical things. Uh, physical things that are going to be, that are going to perish. And, and now we're new believers and we need to speak, we need to seek spiritual things. Uh, we need to seek the bread of life. Uh, we need to seek the living water. We need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Um, and there's also another story when um, they're thirsty again and they go to this uh, river and it's bitter. Um, and Moses, or I think it's Moses, he throws wood in the water, you know, the, the cross, the cross, and he throws it in the water and then it becomes sweet. Um, how much sweeter is it to live with Jesus? Uh, how much sweeter it is to commune with Jesus and to learn from Jesus and to love Jesus and to receive from Jesus. Us as a human race, we, we don't know how to receive. You know, I struggled with that my whole life and um, we need to learn how to receive. Go to God and say, give me what you have for me. You know, Pour your love upon me. God, show me how much you love me. God, what can I do today? How can I bless you today? Um, Yeah, and so the first thing the Israelites, they're seeking the physical. Um, And then I want to go to Hebrews 4.12, which most of us know. Uh, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow, 
and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him who must give an account. And so the Israelites, um, you know, where there is no law, there is no transgression. Um, They probably didn't know what they were doing was wrong, uh, grumbling, complaining, um, you know, talking bad on Moses. So uh, God goes and, and Lord knows what they were doing in the, you know, the wilderness of sin. Um, so God takes Moses up to the Mount of Sinai and he gives the famous Ten Commandments. Um, and so they, they get these Ten Commandments and uh, the provision of the Ten Commandments was supposed to humble us and, and put us on our knees and to draw closer to Jesus. But yet in our um, just our uh, flesh and our just our wicked ways, we... Um, we think that we can uphold it, you know, by our pride. Oh, I can do this. You know what I'm saying? I, I can uphold the law. And um, yeah, uh, God gave us a law to show us our sinful nature and how guilty we are against God, uh, which is supposed to lead us to him. And so I want to give some examples in the, in the New Testament um, to kind of give you a, a better picture uh, Galatians 3, 1 through 6. It says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are now... Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain, does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. So as new believers, we get we get filled with love. We get filled with peace and, and our sins have been washed clean and we want to do all these great things for the Lord, which ain't a bad desire, but we do it by works. And uh, Paul rebukes the Galatians here. Oh, foolish Galatians, having begun by the Spirit, now trying to be perfected in the flesh. He's like, did you not hear? Did you not hear by faith? What does it say? Uh... Yeah, just having ears to hear, um, resting in God, knowing that he has you, knowing that he's going to lead and guide your steps, learning how to hear from God. And it takes, takes a relationship. It takes spending time with him. It takes knowing his word. It takes knowing his heart, you know, um, to rest, uh, to know his heart, that, that you don't have to prove yourself, that he proved it on the cross, that he paid it all, now he just wants to walk with you and talk with you and, and love you and, and grow you and um, take those struggles that you've had your whole life and, and tear them out. Um, and uh, another, another picture is James 2, uh, 14 through 26. All right. Uh, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. 
and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in that same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the message and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Um, just how much we do it in our own strength. Um, we do it in our own works. Um, and just how, you know, keeping and maintaining that relationship and um, being led by the Spirit. Um, you know, you know when God uses you because it's powerful. Um, it's life-changing. Um, there's nothing, nothing better than, than being used by the Spirit of God. But our faith in Christ is where our good works come. You know, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. This faith I live, um, this faith I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so just how maintaining that relationship and, and you know, just, yeah, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and your neighbor as yourself and, and just how God will will use you in works. It said we somehow twist it and, and want to do it the opposite. And um, it's, it's kind of like surface level, you know. Um, it's not from the heart. It's not deep. It's not from love. It's just out of, you know, knowing. It's out of head knowledge. Um, all right, next one is Matthew 15, 1 through 9. All right. Uh, the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandments of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father and mother must surely die. But you say, If anyone tells his father or his mother what you what you would have gained from me is given to God. He need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Um, you know how we... You know, we go to church and we learn the lingo and we know what to say and we know the songs to sing, and, but our hearts are far from him. Um, our relationship has grown dull. Um, we, start to, we start to twist the scriptures and we start to, you know, follow the commandments of men um, instead of truly, um, you know, getting that, just seeking and following Jesus from the heart. We kind of make it a religion, um, and it's easy to fall into. Um, it's hard to deny your flesh daily and, and pick up your cross and, and follow after him. And, and um, how, do we, how do we do this? Um, how, do we, how do we not make it by works, um, but how do we make it by faith? Um, and I want to go back to Hebrews 4 where it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through the division of soul and spirit. Um, so first learning this word. Uh, this word will, it'll pierce uh, through soul and spirit, and, and you'll, you'll know the difference between, you know, whether it be the mind, your will, or your emotions. Um, it'll start to show you, you know, how to, how to walk by the spirit. Um, for the, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Um, it'll, it'll pierce your heart, um, and it'll, it'll show you your sin, and it'll bring you to your knees. And, um, but we can't look. We can't stay there. We can't look at that. You know, does, does anybody look in a mirror and and turn around and forget what he looks like, um, man, 
how much we wish we could. Um, And this is why we look to Jesus. This is why we look to the author and perfecter of our faith. And and, uh, so what I'm trying to get at is we try to do it by works. One, we're physically minded, and, and two, we try to do it by our own works and our own strength. And uh, just how important it is to search your heart. Um, you know, God, if there be any grievous way in me, please remove it from me. Um, and yeah. And so they're in the wilderness, and they're, they're struggling, and they're going around for 40 years um, and they're lost and, and probably uh, frustrated. Um, you know, how many, uh, how many Christians have, you know, been in the desert, are in the desert, uh, wandering around, lost, and, and not living with life and life abundantly? And so um, how, do we, how do we stop doing this? Um, so Moses, um, he gets the Ten Commandments, um, and then he gets the blueprints for the tabernacle, and they start to build the tabernacle. Um, and they, they build the tabernacle, and, and there's this place called the Holy of Holies, and, and there's flowers and trees and um, angels, and it's all, all these symbols of the Garden of Eden. Um, and these symbols of the Garden of Eden, and um, he tries to walk in to... to have this relationship with God to to go and be in God's presence, and he couldn't he couldn't enter uh, because of because of Israel's sin, and so he's uh, yeah he couldn't enter because of Israel's sin, and so um, yeah they start they start complaining again, and um, oh he gives Leviticus um, he gives Leviticus and. Uh, yeah, um, sorry, my brain's like all over the place. He gives Leviticus and that there has to be sacrifices for you to enter the Holy of Holies. Um, and just kind of symbolic of, you know, there's going to be one who comes, um, that is the final sacrifice. Um, and he's, um, and then the veil will, the veil will tear and, um, will be the new temple, uh, will be the new tabernacle. Um, and so, anyway, um, so they're in the wilderness, and they're thirsty again, and uh, Moses uh, goes to the rock, and, and God says, speak to the rock. And uh, what does Moses do? He strikes the rock. And uh, it's just a picture of what our works do. What our works by our own flesh, it uh, puts Jesus back on the cross. And instead of Instead of speaking to Jesus, instead of speaking to the rock. And so God says, Moses, you cannot enter. Um, you cannot enter the promised land. You cannot enter my rest. And so we get to Joshua um, and how, you know, Joshua is, um, yeah, the new leader in command. And um, they go across the Jordan. And um, the when they go across the Red Sea, I, I think of it as like, the baptism of repentance. You know, they, they repent, they turn from their ways, and, and they're walking through the wilderness. They don't know what they're doing. They're, they're struggling. And then they get to the river of Jordan. Um, and they, I look at it as like a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, they, they lay down their lives, and, and uh, they die to themselves, and they're resurrected in Joshua and Christ. Um, and so how if we lay down our life uh, for the gospel and for Jesus and we're resurrected in the spirit, um, just what, what Jesus can do to us, what he can do through us, and you'll see it in Joshua. But I want to read uh, a couple scriptures that talk about laying down your life. Uh, if a grain of wheat does not fall to the ground, um, it, cannot produce no, uh, it cannot produce no grain, no wheat. Um, 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. Um, just how we have to be put to, put to death in the flesh and made alive in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to learn the things of the Spirit. Um, also, if, if 
anyone does not hate his own mother and father, yes, even his own life, um, he cannot be my disciple. If anyone does not get up his, give all his own possessions, he cannot be my disciple. Um, if anyone finds his life, he will lose it. But if anyone, if anyone loses his life for my name's sake, he will find it. And so they get, they get past the Jordan, uh, and they come to Jericho. Um, and God says, stay here and, and uh, get my commands. You know, uh, get my commands and just rest here and, and uh, you know, uh, worship me and praise me and spend time with me. And, and then they get the command to, to walk around the walls, walk around Jericho walls. And, um, you know, I was thinking about this and I'm like, okay, what, is, what does this mean, Lord? And um, what do you think? What do you think they were doing while they were walking around Jericho walls? Praising God? Praising yeah, quiet, quiet. Um, I think of Joshua 1.8. Um, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Meditate on the Lord day and night. And do not let my word depart from your mouth. And just how they're walking around and they're meditating on the word of God and faith starts to arise and then the walls break down. Um, just how important it is to meditate on the word of God day and night. And walls will break down in your life and you will. If, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will find the truth and the truth will set you free. Um, yeah. And... Um, and then they get to AI. You know, they have this great victory, um, and they're excited, and, and AI is a little smaller. You know, it looks like it'll be easier to defeat them. And, um, and they made two mistakes. And uh, so they start to go to fight AI, and they take half the army, and, and um, you know, they didn't consult with God. They didn't ask God. Um, they got ahead of themselves. You know, we get these victories, and we get excited, and, and we're walking great with the Lord, and we start to get ahead of ourselves. Or, or man, I'm, I want to do all these things for the Lord. I want to I go here, and I want to do this. I want to preach. I want to um, go evangelize, but yet we don't get the command from the Lord. Um, and we go, and we fail. And we fail, and, um, and then we got to come back, and then we, we feel sorry for ourselves, and um, but, uh, you know, in those times, the righteous fall seven times, but they will get back up. Um, and then they, uh, there was sin in the camp. Um, sin. You know, the, the sin that's reoccurring, or, or God has commanded you, hey, don't do that. You know, um, stop overeating. Um, stop watching that. Um, stop gossiping. Um, stop slandering. Um, and we continue to do it. And God says, get that out of, get that out of the camp. Uh, because in the Old Testament, they stoned him. You know, lucky, luckily we have mercy and grace. Because uh, how many of us would be stoned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll raise two hands, man. Um, and so, yeah. Um, just what it what it looks like to find rest, um, you know, to seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you, um, to die to yourself, to pick up your cross and trust and believe, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, in everything you do ask him, and everywhere you go communicate with him, um, and he will make your path straight. Um, so just how important it is to have a relationship. And when they were in the wilderness and, and they were seeking the bread of life and the, um, the living water, um, just how that's symbolic of my people will once, they will worship me in spirit and in truth. Um, and just how important it is to worship in spirit and in truth. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's, that's all I got, and, um, yeah, um, just, yeah, trust, man, trust the Lord, 
uh, trust the Lord. He's got you. Um, every, every person that he has in his hand, uh, he will not lose. And so, anyway, I, I hope that blessed y'all, and thank y'all. Yeah. Well, man, that was an awesome word. Thank you so much, man. I just want to pray you out. You know, I feel like a lot of people, like, we do go through the wilderness season, and sometimes we wonder, like, why can't we just go back, back to the way that it was? Well, sometimes God wants us to go through these wilderness seasons so that we don't rely on our emotions yeah. so much, that we become strong in the Lord, that we learn to trust Him in all of our ways. And it's more than just uh, riding the, the roller coaster of emotionalism. It's, it's leaning on the truth. It's leaning on the truth, and that's exactly what Brother Frank is trying to tell us here. And uh, man, Father God, I just I thank you, Lord, for for sending Frank today to give us that awesome word. Father God, if there's anything in us that needs to be cleansed, any hindrances at all, Lord God, you would begin to expose that right now. Father God, we thank you for all of the the faithful believers that came tonight to hear uh, Brother Frank's word. And Father God, they come every Wednesday, Lord, and we know that you see them, and we know that you're going to bless them for that faithfulness, Lord, because that is a fruit of the Spirit that doesn't get talked about a whole lot. So Father God, we want to honor them and give them thanks for coming and, 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 and being the backbone of this church. And we, we just, we love you guys. And we just want to send y'all out with this, with this grace, this special grace and anointing that, that we're bringing tonight. This, this fresh fire that we're bringing that comes straight from the throne of heaven. Uh, the gather team has been up here praying and, and getting all this cleared out up here so that we can come up here and really connect and get in the presence of the Lord. And I truly feel that tonight. I feel that anointing. I feel that grace. And Father God, I thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we give you all the honor and all the glory. Amen.